looking forward to this one. It's gonna be awesome. Ken Johnson doing a stand-up. Yeah. All right, so how's everybody doing? It's uh, great to be back doing stand-up. I haven't been up here in a while. I'm a little bit nervous for this crowd in particular. It's one of those things that everyone from either this class or from my class, most of you have heard that I do stand-up, but no one has actually seen me do it before. And I don't know if you guys have caught this about myself, but I have a tendency to overhype myself sometimes. <laughs> That being said, this brought to mind because when I saw the Al Jolson act, there's actually a short film that none of, very few of you may have seen that I did last year. For the Halloween showcase last year, it didn't get shown, but I directed a film called The Jazz Singer 2, Al Jolson's Revenge, <laughs> in which I had black and white footage of random compass students all shaking doorknobs around the building while I did, uh, while I was singing Mammy in a horror voice. So you just had this film of all of this handy cam footage of me just going through the sound system. Mammy. And Fred, Phil has not seen this footage yet, but there's a shot of him at the very end when he said, hey, I just need a piece of footage for this video. I'm gonna walk into your office first person, and I need you to look very surprised. And so there's this clip in this video that Phil still hasn't seen yet, in which I walk into the room, and he just has this face on, just like, and it just says, so, heard you don't have a thing, heard you don't like Al Jolson. Well, you ain't heard nothing yet. So it's, it's great to be in a happier mood as of lately, because there's a lot of people grown to know that my fiance left me at the very end of Thesis last year during the film Timeless, which for those of you guys who have seen that movie, you realize that that film is about a man who goes to ridiculous lengths to get back the woman he loves, just to realize that not only does she probably not want him, but he's probably not going to get her back anyways. So you can imagine that comparison was a lot of fun. And as everyone's depressed, they'll probably get some sympathy laughs. So yay, we're on the right track. <laughs> So for this, uh, I wouldn't go that far. So for this extra routine, I'm going to need a quick volunteer. Do I have any, uh, anybody who would like to help me out with this routine? All right, so how many of you guys growing up are fans of the show Lost? All right, so I, I was never watching Lost that much when I was growing up, but the thing is, yeah, come here. The thing is, is I asked people what, what it was about Lost that thought was so great, and everyone said, well, it's because it's complicated, because it's thick, and it's rich, and just, it, it's the complexity of Lost that makes it so popular. But I always found that Lost wasn't that complicated, so I went back and I looked through it, and I realized that over the years I've developed the ability to sum up the entire series of Lost in under 30 seconds. So, I'm going to have you hold on to this real quick on that stopwatch right there, and just have you say go on the right mark, and stop when I say time, and we'll see if we can still do this. Whenever you are. All right, three, two, one, go. Oh no, we're all trapped in the sound. We gotta come up and see if we can get off the sound. Oh, there's all these people dying left and right. We gotta come up and see if we can get off the sound. Oh, look, all these hallucinations everyone. There's a smoke monster. We still gotta come up and see if we can get off the island. Hey, look, the ship. We're finally getting off the island. We're finally off the island. We're finally off the island. We gotta get back on the island. The island's gone. All right, the only way we're gonna get back off this island is we need to use the time machine. We have a time machine. We're going forwards in time, backwards in time, going sideways in time, and alternate realities. And that doesn't even make any sense. Oh, look, we're all blowing up in heaven. We're all dying. But at least we're finally off the island. What island? Hey, look, it's the dog. Time. 26 seconds. <laughs> okay. What? So, for a lot of people, a lot of people have problems with the great amount of remakes that have been going, coming out in these last couple of years. And I don't mind remakes as much, because in those rare opportunities when you see a good film that picks a modern person that you've always wanted to see in that role, and then you get that opportunity. And recently, in the last couple of years, when I rewatched the Burton version of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, it really got me thinking about that one in particular. That there are so many people I really would like to see playing Willy Wonka and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So I composed the top five people I like to see play Willy Wonka in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, starring at number five. So I've seen you on here for a tour. <laughs> My name is Willy Wonka. And if you walk through these doors, you shall find your way towards the chocolate fountain. And you must promise me you shall not jump into the fountain. Because if you jump into the fountain, you shall be shocked. Who the shock should you into the incinerator? And if you are shocked into the incinerator, you shall be <laughs> Number four. I don't know, you guys. I know a lot of you Oompa Loompas have been working hard, and <laughs> you seem to have what seems to be a dynamite flavor here, but I think I could use more cowbell. <laughs> 
Now, guys, we're going to try this one more time. And Gene, I need you to really explore the factory space this time. I mean, seriously, explore the space. I like what I'm tasting here. And Joe, the way you've been talking to me, the tone is all wrong. You got the wrong tone. You talk to me like that again, I'm going to stab you in the face with a soldering iron. Coming in at number four, uh, may this man rest in peace, who's a great hero of mine growing up, Mr. Steve Irwin. Three. three. Yep, three. <laughs> How can I might kill y'all and the exotic regions of my chocolate factory? Once again, we're looking at a very rare breed of Oompa Loompa. You have to be care very careful getting close to them, because they may not be large, but they are very pointed and say, hey, 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 you're right, you're right. <laughs> Number two. Come to me in the opening of my chocolate factory. Never once have I given you a favor. You look over here, you will see my head Oompa Loompa rolling. He will take you to the taffy room in there. He will make you an offer you can't refuse. And coming in at number one, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Bob Dylan. Chocolate factory's back in town, everybody's gathering round. All the children flee to the call. The gumdrops and gobstoppers attract them all. So many flavors for you to try. Your money, you better be saving. It's only around for a limited time, and the times, they are a-changing. I'm going to leave you guys with one more here. By far, of all the impressions I do, this particular joke is the most requested thing I've ever had. In fact, one night, I went through a set, Tenth guy up on stage, nine people before me, and a guy on the audience out loud said it was the funniest thing he had heard all night. <laughs> you remember the thing I mentioned earlier about overhyping myself? <laughs> so, a couple years ago, they released a documentary called African Cats. And, it, and on stage one night, I asked how many people in the audience had seen the documentary African Cats. And about half the audience raised their hands. And after that, I asked them how many of them went to go see it just because it was narrated by Samuel L. Jackson. And no one dropped their hands. So after a while, I figured there must be other celebrities out there that would be really good at giving de narratives for all of these documentaries. So like, what if you had African cats as if it were done by, by Jack Nicholson, for instance? So we're here in the African savannah. You see the gazelle's trying to get away from the cheetah here. You've got to be very careful because the... See, the gazelle's gonna try to get away in a zigzag pattern. So I'm walking up the chain, I'm like, all right, Sparky, not here for you. If you wanna catch up and get the little lady, you gotta be a straight shooter, do you got it? <laughs> but by far out of the two, the one I get requested the most for, a friend of mine came up with the idea for this. He said the idea of this particular one out loud, and I thought it was crazy. I did it once out loud improv, and it worked perfect ever since. So what if we had a documentary of Arnold Schwarzenegger talking about meerkats? And this is how it would sound. All right, so the make is sitting up there, and he's looking like I'm on the top of the tunnel, he's surveying around, like a terminator, it's like boop, 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 it's like around in the condo, and the condo, it comes down, it's like, and then, 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 then the make is running around to all the others, it's like, everybody get into the tunnel, and everyone tucks into the tunnel, and he goes back into the tunnel, he comes back up with the condo, and he goes like, I'll be back, and he goes back into the tunnel. <laughs> Thank you guys, you've been a great audience. Um, the next guy is uh, Sarah Weatherall. Woo! <laughs> Nothing feels the way it was before. 
The next act is the lovely Elizabeth Kaufman. Woo! 